If you can bake, you can understand AI. A bold claim, you might think. I'm Rose Luckin, Professor of Artificial Intelligence, and in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how through the humble Yorkshire pudding. Now, one thing you may not know about artificial intelligence is that it's not computer science that makes it, it's people who make it. It's people who understand how AI works. So forget the confusing technology talks, this is Rose's AI, where I'm going to help everyone understand the basics of artificial intelligence so that you can use it safely, wisely, and to reap its multiple benefits. And we're going to celebrate a great British tradition, not just the Yorkshire pudding, but the great British Bake Off by baking. And we're going to be making some lovely, crispy, soft inside Yorkshire puddings. I may not be Prue Leith or Paul Hollywood. Indeed, I may not be the lovely Noel Fielding or Alison Hammond. But I can assure you what's going to happen in this kitchen is going to rise. Now, you might wonder what a professor of artificial intelligence is doing making Yorkshire puddings. Well, I've been teaching artificial intelligence for many years now. Some 30 years I've been working in artificial intelligence and education. And I've learnt that the best way to explain complex things is through familiar concepts. And what can be more familiar than a lovely roast dinner with one of those lovely Yorkshire puddings to accompany it? But first, let's understand a little bit more about what AI is. And I'm going to do this with a very simple example that I use every day. So before we get baking, I'm just going to use my mobile phone to tell you a bit about artificial intelligence. Now, a definition of artificial intelligence that I like and that's used widely is that artificial intelligence is technology that behaves intelligently by analysing its environment and behaving intelligently to achieve the goals that it's been designed to achieve with some degree of autonomy. But what does that mean? Well, let me explain through an AI app I use on a daily basis, speech to text. So I can open up my mobile phone, pull out a note or a message that I want to write, click on the little microphone icon and talk. And the words appear in front of me as I speak. So what's happening there? Well, the AI behind speech to text has been built to analyse the environment of my spoken words. It has been trained on millions of examples of the relationship between spoken words and characters on a screen. It has been trained that there are things called spaces, sentences, punctuation. So it has learnt through experience. It has learnt through the experience of data, these millions of examples of the relationship between speech to text. And so when I click on the microphone icon, the AI analyzes the environment of the sounds of my words and translates them to characters on the screen. It does this with a degree of autonomy. I click on the icon and off it goes. Now what's really interesting about this kind of artificial intelligence is it isn't the case that somebody has sat down and written a very, very detailed and long programme that has a set of rules where we specify exactly what happens for every possible sound and every possible character that might result on the screen. So we might have had a rule that said, if a person says night, the characters are K-N-I-G-H-T instead of N-I-G-H-T. But imagine how many millions and millions of rules we'd have to have if we were ever going to have a system that did speech to text in that way. But that's not how it works. As I say, it's trained on millions of examples. It learns from experience. But the experience that the AI learns from is that data. We learn from experience too, but we learn from experiencing the world directly as well as indirectly through formal education, for example. And that's an important difference between artificial and human intelligence. The fact that we can experience the world directly, whereas my speech-to-text AI experiences the world, learns about the world, through data. Now, let's put this aside now we've done that basic definition and get back to the baking because that's what we're here for. So I've said a lot about data there, haven't I? 
And it's true that all machine learning AI that fits within that definition, and I've talked about speech to text, but it's true for all of those large language models we're now using, like ChatGPT or Claude, Copilot, Gemini, all these generative AI applications, that definition's true for self-driving cars and many other AI applications. And one other thing is true, and this is where we get to do some baking. There are three fundamental ingredients that have to be present in the right proportions for machine learning AI to work. And if you can understand the importance and the role of these three ingredients, you'll be a long way to starting to understand AI. So the three ingredients are data, which I've talked a lot about, processing power, and algorithms. Now, it so happens that my lovely Yorkshire puddings also have three key ingredients, flour, eggs, and milk. So let's get baking. So I start with the flour, and I'm using plain flour. Now, for this Yorkshire pudding recipe, what I need is 140 grams. I'm going to turn my scales on and I'm going to measure 140 grams of plain flour. Now, a flour comes in lots of different types. We can certainly have self-raising flour or plain flour like this. But it's also the case that you can have very fine flour for making pasta. Now, another thing about flour is that it's had to be processed to get it to this lovely fine state. It's not like that when it's grown. It's grown as grain and then it has to be processed a great deal to get it to this state. Now that's true of data as well. Now it so happens that I don't think that this flour is quite refined enough. So I'm going to sieve it, filter it if you like, to make sure that I remove any impurities, any lumps that might stop my batter being the perfect Yorkshire pudding batter that I want it to be. So now I have my lovely flour. Think of this as the data. It's been processed, it's refined and it's ready to be used to make our lovely Yorkshire puddings. Now we can have data of lots of different types as well. We can have numerical data, text data, behavioural data data about all the ways in which we interact in the world. So we can have lots of different types of data, just as we can have lots of different types of flour. And it's true of data that we have to process it, clean it, refine it before it's ready to be used as part of an AI system, which represents our data. Second ingredient of our perfect storm, as we might say, that's enabled us to build the kind of sophisticated artificial intelligence applications we're now able to build is processing power. Now the eggs are the power that gives us the beautiful rise in our Yorkshire puddings because we want our Yorkshire puddings to really rise up out of the pan. Now that's not going to happen unless we've got the power of the eggs. So in the analogy for artificial intelligence, the processing power is represented by our eggs. And we need to get the right balance of processing power to data. Now, we've got a lot more processing power today than we had when I first started working in artificial intelligence about 30 years ago. There's more processing power on my mobile phone than we had in the computer science and AI department at the University of Sussex when I was first studying artificial intelligence. And it's because we have all that amazing process power that we're able to produce the kind of sophisticated artificial intelligence systems that we're able to produce. Because we need that processing power to do the learning from the data. Now, those of you who know me well know that it's not unusual for me to combine baking and talking about artificial intelligence. In the past, I've made raspberry meringues, I've talked about souffles and muffins. Indeed, in this lovely little book here, AI for school teachers. I do machine learning through baking. So it's not unusual for me to do this. And I think it's a really nice way of getting to grips with AI, as well as having a lot of fun in the kitchen. So back to the three ingredients. So we've got data and we've got processing power. We've got flour and we've got eggs. Now the third ingredient in our perfect storm of artificial intelligence is algorithms. So what are we going to use for the algorithms? Well, the algorithms are the things that bring together the processing power and the data. So for me, I'm going to use milk. Now I've got 140 grams of plain flour and four eggs. 
So I now need 200 ml of milk. Yorkshire pudding is quite a forgiving thing to bake, but it does help if you add the milk gradually. So we need to add the flour gradually. It's wonderful to have this lovely, powerful stand mixer. I used to do all this by hand, and it's really great that we now have this kind of technology. In the same way, that years ago, it would take us ages to train our AI algorithms. We can now work much faster, thanks to the amazing computer chips that provide the processing power for us to do that training. So we've got milk, eggs, flour. Algorithms, processing power, data. So the milk has brought together and combined our data and our processing power. Now, something that people often don't know about Yorkshire pudding batter is that to get the best results, what you need to do, leave it to stand in a warm place, full of bubbles, wow. Cover it up with a nice tea towel and I'll leave it in the warm kitchen because we're having a roast tonight, of course we are, with our lovely Yorkshire puddings, and I will do the rest of the preparation while this beautiful batter sits there and warms. The flour softens and we'll get much better results. Now the same thing's true when it comes to artificial intelligence. You can't just put an artificial intelligence application out there in the world and expect it to work first time. You need to let it settle in exactly as this batter is settling and resting and getting itself organised. In order for your AI to work, you need to have the right conditions. So we need people who are ready to use the AI. We need systems that are ready to use the AI in the same way that we need the right conditions for this batter to warm and soften. Now, finally, my other top tip for making Yorkshire puddings is, this is my very well-loved Yorkshire pudding tin, you must, must, must get very, very hot fat. So you need to put a bit of oil in each of these little trays and put it in the oven and make it very, very hot, smoking hot, at least five minutes, probably 10. And then when you pour your lovely, soft, warmed batter into the patty tins, you should see it bubbling around the edges as the cooler batter hits the heat of the oil. And that's what you need if you're really going to get these great Yorkshire puddings. And then you pop it in an oven, about 210 centigrade if you've got a fan oven, and leave it for about 20 minutes. Do not open the oven door, otherwise you may damage your beautiful Yorkshire puddings. Similarly, if you haven't done the right preparation for introducing an AI system into your organisation, if you haven't got the hot tin, the hot fat, the oven heated up ready, then you won't get the best results. We know from decades of research looking at the way in which, for example, educational technologies have been used and introduced, that it's just as much about the way you implement the piece of technology as its design. So you can have the best batter in the world, the perfect proportion of eggs, flour, milk, beaten up to perfection, rested, but if you haven't got the tin prepped and the oven hot and the oil hot, you won't get the perfect Yorkshire pudding. And it's the same with any of these technologies. We have to do the preparation if we're really going to get the best results. Let's just recap what we've talked about. I've talked about artificial intelligence. I've given you a definition. I've said it's technology that analyzes its environment and acts intelligently according to the goals that it's been designed to achieve with a degree of autonomy. I showed you my phone and the speech to text and explained how that comes about because the technology has been built to achieve the goal of translating spoken words into characters on a screen. And I explained that the AI had learned through experience and that experience was represented by data. We then started looking at the three core components that any AI machine learning application has, data, algorithms, processing power. And we looked at the lovely Yorkshire pudding batter and compared the flour to the data, the eggs to the processing power, the milk to the algorithms. I really hope that you're going to join me on Rose's AI. Please do subscribe. 
if you want a practical guide to artificial intelligence. In the next episode of Rose's AI, we'll look at another complex concept within the world of artificial intelligence, and at the same time, we'll make a beautiful Victoria sandwich. The one thing that's true for both artificial intelligence and baking is that it's important to know what you're trying to achieve before you get started. Join me on Rose's AI for lots of fun baking and learning about artificial intelligence.